John spoke about it. He said someone would come after him to announce a kingdom. Now John is dead. He must go to Jesus. Some of those that were with us have already gone. But what shall we do? Shall we all go away? Many people come to us to seek a word of comfort. But we cannot abandon them. Let us send somebody to him. And he can tell us what to do.
May I have some of your water? But you're a Jew, and you're talking to me. Yes, it's very hot, you see, and I'm thirsty. I wouldn't refuse water to anyone. Where'd you come from? From Nazareth. What? And you're asking me, a Samaritan, for water? Woman, had you known who was asking you for this water, you would be the one to ask, and I would have given you living water. How could you have drawn water? You don't even have a jar, and the well is deep. The Almighty made this well spring forth and handed it to Jacob the Patriarch. Centuries have passed. Do you think you're better than God? You don't believe me, do you? And I tell you that he who drinks water from this well will be thirsty again. But he who drinks of the water I give will have his thirst quenched forever. The water I will give him will be a gushing spring to eternal life. If you really do have this water, then give me some, so I'll never be thirsty again. And I won't have to come to the well and take water home all the time. If you want this water, then go. Call your husband and come back here. But I don't have a husband. But you've had five in the past, and even though you're with a man now, he isn't your husband. Am I right? <gasps> but you, how do you know that? I really have had five husbands. You must be a prophet. The time has come for the true worshippers of the Almighty to worship him in spirit and truth only. Lord, you speak to me, a Samaritan woman, as though your message were from the Almighty. The Messiah, we are awaiting. He is the one who will bring the good news. Woman, you have understood. I am he Israel is waiting for. Sunstroke or something? I'm telling you, I just met the Messiah. Well, where did you meet this Messiah? Near the well. A man? Yes, a man. You've certainly met many men, but this is the first time you've met a Messiah. I know you're right, but the man I met could read my thoughts. He knew everything about me. You've got to believe me. His words were new. They were words of life. The Messiah? Why would he come here to us? Let's go and take a look. My food is to do the will of him who has sent me. Harvest time is at hand. They're waiting in the village. My name is Jesus, and I come from Nazareth of Galilee. What have you come to Samaria for? To do the will of him who has sent me, and to bring you good news. 
Repent your sinful ways, because the kingdom of God is at hand. Uh, the woman you met said that you're the Messiah. In the book of the prophet Isaiah, it's written, The Spirit of God is upon me, and therefore he has anointed me. He has sent me to preach the good news to the poor, to tell the prisoners that they will be set free, and the blind that they will see, and the downtrodden that they will be freed to proclaim the year of grace of the Lord. I say again, the kingdom of God is at hand. shortly be arriving in Chorazin. We'll spend the night there. All right, Daddy, but Pyrus is thirsty. Peace be with you. Also with you, if you come in peace. It looks like you need help. God bless you. Thank you. this fruit. Unfortunately, we finished the water. We've still got some water in our flasks. Where are you going? We're going to Capernaum, to Jesus of Nazareth. He lives by the lake with the fishermen. That's where we're going, too. Why do you want to see him? Haven't you seen my son? He's paralyzed, and I want Jesus to heal him. Why do you want to see him? We're taking him a message. May God bless you. Yes, you've earned it. Take it, but what do you want to do with it? Have you heard? Jesus is back! Since 
Jesus has been staying here at Peter's, there have been people from all over Galilee, from Samaria, and even from Jerusalem coming here to Capernaum. Hey, women! Women at the house! What do you want, Zephyr? I voted for Jesus! Whatever for? Don't you know? Jesus is my friend. Here is Zephyr, the lazy bones. And what's your excuse today? I've been working with my father since dawn. And then... Then I went to give a fish to Jesus. And then? And then... Uh... Well done. But that's no reason to arrive late for school, and you know it. Please make way. Let us through. If you really cared about your son, you would have come here early this morning like we all did to see Jesus up close. I got here before sunrise. We've all got something we want to ask him. We'll just have to wait our turn. No, it's too late. Let's go round to the other side of the house. There's no time. Let's go up on the roof. Do not store up treasures for yourselves on Earth, where moths and woodworms destroy them and thieves can break in and steal. But store up treasures for yourselves in heaven, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jesus? Your sins are forgiven. he mean? Just who does he think he is? He thinks he's God. What is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? Now, so that you may know that the Son of Man is authorized to forgive sins on earth, I say to you, get up, take up your bed, and go home. you. May God bless you. You've been looking for me for some time now, haven't you? Yes, that's right, Master. Master, we have a message for you. John the Baptist is dead. It was Herod's doing. Dead? <laughs> <laughs> what?
once he sent us to you, and we took your reply back to him. And what did he say of me? John said, After me will come one who is far more powerful than I, and I am not worthy of untying his shoestrings. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He will gather his wheat in the granary and will burn the chaff with a fire that cannot be put out. His task was fulfilled according to the will of the Father. What are you going to do now? Us? We came here to join you, Lord. If you are willing, may you be blessed. Follow me. The harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. Let's go. In order to announce the gospel to all men, Jesus traveled from village to village accompanied by a crowd of followers. He went along the shores of the lake of Gennesaret, among the green hills of Galilee. He followed the winding course of the river Jordan, and he passed through the barren mountains and woods of Samaria. The gospel according to St. John tells us that it was here in Samaria that Jesus met a woman who was drawing water from a well. Samaria is the central region of Palestine. It is situated between Galilee to the north and Judea to the south. It borders to the east with the Jordan Valley and to the west with Safela, a territory sloping down from the mountains to the Mediterranean Sea. When Moses led the Jewish people to the Promised Land, his successor Joshua assigned this central region of Palestine to the tribe of Ephraim. That is why this mostly mountainous region was called Mount Ephraim. This region's principal city was Sechem, where, according to tradition, already a few centuries before Joshua, Abraham had built an altar to God near the oak tree of Moreh. The Bible tells us that later, Jacob, Abraham's grandson, bought a piece of land near Sechem and dug a well there. Joshua built a sanctuary in Sechem to keep the Ark of the Covenant, established by Moses between God and his people near Mount Sinai. When King David conquered Jerusalem in Judea, making it the capital of the Kingdom of Israel, the Ark of the Covenant was transferred from Sechem to the new capital. At the death of David's successor, Solomon, the Kingdom of Israel was divided in two, the Kingdom of Israel in the north and the Kingdom of Judea in the south, with Jerusalem as its capital. The first capital of the Northern Kingdom was Sechem, which was then replaced by a new capital, Samaria, built by King Omri in 850 BC. The new city's name was then extended to the whole region. The Northern Kingdom, Samaria, was conquered by the Assyrians in 721 BC. Its inhabitants were deported and were replaced with heathen populations. As a result of that, hostility arose between the new population of Samaria and the people of Israel. The people of Samaria decided to build a temple of their own on Mount Gerizim that would compete with the Temple of Jerusalem. The Samaritan's temple was destroyed in 128 BC by John Ircanus, a king of Judea, 64 years before the Romans conquered Palestine. Now Jesus came to announce the gospel to the people of this hostile region, and he made a stop near the old well of Abraham. And it was in this very place that Jesus, a Jew, asked a Samaritan woman for a drink of water. <laughs> 